Alright, so picture this. It's the summer of 2016 and you hear about a new game called Dead by Daylight. You decide to buy it and try it out. You select the killer role as that is the thing which interests you the most. You play the game for a little bit and you get fairly good at it. Eventually, however, you start realizing that in your matches, the generators are going by pretty quickly. And so you try to find some perks or other things like that which could potentially counter this, only to realize that there was absolutely nothing in the game which could help you do this. Yep, that's right. During the early days of Dead by Daylight, there were no generator regression perks, no generator blocking perks, and killers didn't even have the ability to damage generators by kicking them. The only thing in the game that vaguely resembled some form of gen defense was Thanatophobia, which was only introduced a little bit more than 2 months after the game's release, and originally only offered a 15% reduction in repair speeds at its maximum strength. Furthermore, not only did killers not have almost any kinds of generator defense, but on the contrary, survivors actually had quite a bit of stuff that massively increased their generator efficiency. One of the biggest offenders of this was the original brand new part, which back in patch 1.0.0 allowed you to instantly complete a whole generator the same frame that it was used, only at the small downside of it reducing your two box charges and depleting the item on use. Speaking of two boxes, they themselves were also fairly powerful even back then, as these items didn't provide that big of a repair speed increase as they do today, however the amount of their available charges completely made up for that. Other perks like Prove Thyself and the original leader also played a part in increasing generator efficiency, and the fact that gens back then only took 65 seconds to complete was another factor in this. Thankfully though, the developers eventually realized the state of their game, and in order to try and balance things out, they decided to implement a suggestion from the community. That suggestion was to add another secondary objective to Dead by Daylight, in hopes that it would give survivors more things to do and so deter them from completing generators so quickly. This came in the form of totems, however this new mechanic by itself didn't really fix anything, as when it was first implemented in the 1.3.0 update, it served no real purpose but to give survivors a couple of bullet points, as there wasn't really anything else in the game which could interact with this new mechanic. However, this would all change one update later, when the A Flesh and Mud chapter was introduced. Guess what this one included? Yep, that's right, it's the Hag, who also happened to be the first ever killer to introduce Hex perks to the game. With that came DBD's first ever actual generator regression perk, Hex Ruin. Now, this one as you all probably know was a very controversial perk during the early days of Dead by Daylight, but I won't go into much detail about it since there already exist plenty of videos discussing this perk's history. Yet another pretty sizable buff for the killer site would come a couple of months later, with the 1.4.0 patch, that finally being the ability to damage partially repaired generators. This was certainly a welcome addition, however its original effects were pretty minuscule to say the least, since it only allowed a damaged generator to regress 25% at most, over a period of 70 seconds, after which the regression would just simply stop. Pair that with the fact that there were no perks at all that utilized this mechanic, and it wouldn't be an understatement to say that even though this mechanic was a step in the right direction, it still needed some major adjustments. Thankfully though this would all later change with the implementation of the Doctor, who brought the overcharge perk with him, that being the first ever perk to in some way interact with the regression mechanic. The regression cap was also removed a few updates later, and the damaging interaction was shortened to 2 seconds from the previous 3, since as you can see the original one was very very slow. Now for about a year and a half after this, there were really no major changes or new mechanics added to the game in relation to gen regression, that is if you don't count the implementation of Pop Goes the Weasel of course. However, when Behavior started developing the demise of the Fateful chapter, word got around that a brand new mechanic for generators was going to be introduced. Can you guess what this new mechanic was? Yep, that's right. When chapter 11 was released to the public, the entity blocker mechanic for generators was also finally implemented in the game. This came in the form of the Corrupt Intervention perk, however it was later added to other new perks as well. Now, throughout all of this time, a certain meta was starting to form around certain killer perks. See, back then it wasn't at all uncommon to see players running a combination of either Hex Ruin, Pop Goes the Weasel or Tinkerer, as all of these perks worked wonders together. 
And even when Ruin received its big rework during the 3.5.0 update, which made it by far the worst perk to pair with Pop Goes the Weasel, players continued to use both of these perks in the same loadout. It got to the point where it almost became a meme to see a Blight running Hex Ruin, Hex Undying, Pop Goes the Weasel and Tinkerer. Additionally, slowly but surely, more and more different generator defense perks were added, for example Deadlock, Scourgehook Pain Resonance, Call of Brian, etc. Pair this with the fact that a lot of the early stuff that survivors had was getting reworked or nerfed pretty significantly, for example brand new parts in two boxes, and it shouldn't come as a surprise that many survivors were beginning to get bored of facing the same 5 or 6 generator defense perks every single match. And this is where the 6.1.0 update came in to save the day. Or did it? 6.1.0 is widely known as and considered to be Dead by Daylight's first meta shakeup, both by the developers and the community. What this patch did was that it basically nerfed the strong perks and buffed the other ones that were considered to be fairly weak, so to say. For example, Hex Ruin received a, in my opinion, pretty unnecessary nerf, while Eruption got its numbers increased due to the fact that the original ones were considered to be too conservative by the developers. What this resulted in was that, yes, the old Ruin and Undank meta did come to an end, however a new meta started to form, which was arguably even worse and more unhealthy for the game than the previous one. This new meta revolved around running 4 generator slowdown perks, with Eruption, Call of Brian, Overcharge and Pain Resonance being among the most commonly used. The gen kicking meta became even more hated when killers like the Knight and the Skull Merchant were introduced, as all that most players did with them was just camp 3 gens and not really engage in any actual chases. In typical behavior fashion, this resulted in these perks being nerfed and changed yet again. However, killers were also unhappy with a certain aspect of generator regression, that being gen tapping. And so, during the 7.5.0 update, it was made so that survivors now have to repair at least 5% of a regressing generator in order to stop it from regressing, since before that, repairing a generator for a single frame would cause it to instantly stop regressing. This update also increased the default damage generator interaction regression from minus 2.5% to minus 5%. In addition, a special mechanic was added in order to address 3 genning concerns. Basically, a generator can now suffer a maximum of 8 so-called regression events, before it can no longer be damaged by any means. If you're wondering what a regression event is, basically it is defined as the killer either manually or through their perks, removing a minimum of minus 2.5% of that generator's progression in an instant. And this is where things stand today. Personally, this might be kind of a controversial opinion, but I think that the game would be much easier to balance if there were no generator progression and no generator regression perks or items. This way the developers can simply balance things out with the regular numbers and the game would hopefully become more chase oriented. Well, I guess that was it. This was a brief history of generator regression in Dead by Daylight. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new from it. Anyways, make sure to like and subscribe Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!